Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and in this video I'm going to show you how I fixed this little motor right here. I'll give you a hint. It was user error. So here's what was happening to me. I took this out, put it on my little boat, and went out into the river to actually shoot a video. Went through the whole regular starting procedure, which as you know, with one of these is a little bit, I, I, I'll say it, it's a little bit complicated. Unlike an electric trolling motor, there is definitely a process to start one of these motors up. You first have to turn on the fuel, you vent the cap, you set your choke, you set your idle speed, make sure your safety lanyard's on, and you give this a, gentle pull to kind of set the starter cord and then give it a tug to start it up. So what happened to me is I got it started, it started right up and it ran for not even a minute and then it shut off. And there was water coming out of the telltale because I was afraid maybe something was blocked and causing it to overheat. There was plenty of fuel in it. So I checked everything, restarted it. Same thing, actually this time it probably lasted about 30 seconds. Now what's hard whenever you're trying to diagnose these kinds of things out on the water is that you're thinking about a lot of other stuff. You see other boaters out there, maybe there's tides and currents moving your boat along, and so you start to panic a little bit. And I'll admit it, I was panicking a little bit that day because I kind of was going through things in my head and the motor wouldn't work. And luckily for me, I had a plan. And my plan was the fact that I had a paddle and I was very, very close to my pier still. So I could just paddle back very, very easily. And you should always have a backup plan and then a backup plan to your backup plan and then an emergency plan. And I had several of those and I didn't have to think about them too hard once this failed. So I just sort of tried to quickly think about fixing the motor when I couldn't do that, then I started thinking about plan B, which was just paddle back to shore. So today, I decided I'm gonna take a look at what actually went wrong with this motor. Why is it not running? First thing I did is dropped it in my test bucket here, clamped it on the side, and then I went through the starting procedure. And sure enough, it fired up and shut right off. So uh, part of me was happy because it was still having the same problem, unlike whenever you take your car to the dealer and it stops making that noise. So I'm gonna pause right here and talk a little bit about what these engines require. An engine requires four basic things. It requires fuel, air, spark, and compression. It requires those four things in order for it to work. So in this situation, obviously I knew I had fuel in my tank and I know that I had a spark because of the fact that it was running. And obviously it's getting air and compression because once again, it was running. The motor was, has, had been working. But those four things are what was required. And if there's anything that breaks down in any way with any of those four areas, that's what can cause your engine not to run. So if you've got a known working motor that you've been using all along and it hasn't failed you. So you know it has compression because it ran the other day and it didn't start knocking or fall apart or anything. And you've mixed the fuel yourself and filled up the tank and you know you've got fuel and it starts and runs. So now you know you got a little bit of spark. Now it gets to be a mystery. What the heck is wrong with my motor? So to troubleshoot this, you have to kind of think about all of those nuances and what is it that could be impacting them? So one of the first things I thought of was my safety lanyard. This safety lanyard doesn't quite fit on there as well as I'd like it to. I kind of have to work it to keep it on the start stop button. So I was thinking maybe my safety lanyard was bad. I do have a spare, the old safety lanyard, which doesn't work right, but fits on here pretty well. And I thought about swapping out the safety lanyard. The other thing to think about is maybe it's overheating and getting too hot and that's shutting it off even though water is coming out of the telltale. That's a possibility. Another possibility, what if my fuel is old? I have to use, um, I guess it's E10, 
fuel with ethanol in it. So my fuel could be old, it could have separated. There could be something that went wrong with the carburetor, a blockage, plugged up hose or something like that. That's very likely in this scenario. But sometimes the fix is even simpler than that. Problem was I wasn't venting my gas tank properly. And that was causing all of my problems. So what was happening is when I would first start the motor, enough fuel trickling into the carburetor to get it to start and run for a couple minutes. It's a very small carburetor, so it can run off of what's in the float bowl and what's trickling in. But air wasn't flowing back into the fuel tank. And so therefore the gravity feed of this fuel tank was not refeeding the carburetor. Over time, as it was sitting there with a little bit of venting that I had, or maybe things bubbling back through, a little bit more gas would trickle down in there to let it start and run for a little bit and then shut back off. And it was because I didn't have this vent open all the way. That was the whole problem. And here's how I figured it out. Today, when I went to loosen this vent cap, I decided to first take off the fuel cap. And as I took off the fuel cap, I looked at what was underneath here for the vent. When I turn this, it actually winds this stopper up toward the cap. So without taking this fuel cap apart, I often thought it was very simple that it was essentially as you loosen that, that vent, that that's just a hole going right into the tank, letting air through. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because once again, this is something where it's sort of got a valve in there that allows the air to come in, but also doesn't allow fuel to splash back out again. Because for environmental reasons, we don't want fuel going back out into the atmosphere, fuel vapors. We wanna to try to restrict that as much as possible. So these caps are designed where it's meant to sort of work one way and I'm not going to take this one completely apart to look at the inside guts of it. But essentially there is a hole underneath of there and that's what lets air in. But you have to loosen it up enough so that that stopper does do whatever it's supposed to do to be able to open the passages to allow air to come in. I think because of sitting for a little while that maybe mine just didn't open up all the way or I didn't loosen it enough or something stuck temporarily. Now, obviously, another way to quickly troubleshoot the cap is if you were having the same kind of problem, just pull the cap all the way off. Because if the cap is all the way off and the motor runs and then the cap's all the way on and the motor doesn't run, clearly it's something to do with the vent in the cap. So basically, once I had solved that issue, everything was fine then. So switch my fuel on. Vent my tank all the way. Put my choke on, set my idle, give it a quick, oh, now it's going to start right up. <laughs> now let me show you something, let me tighten this up. I'm going to close it all the way first. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Thank you. With any luck, it should stop running in a minute. <laughs> because we've closed the vent on the fuel tank. There it is. So this is one of those situations where you always want to look for the simple solutions first. Because sometimes what is wrong with your motor is something very, very simple and you don't want to overlook those kinds of things. I've overlooked those things several times and made all kinds of mistakes and started 
taken apart a carburetor to rebuild it before I actually really determined whether or not there was something wrong with it. So it makes me very happy to know that my little Mercury two-stroke outboard is still good to go and it's a motor that I can trust still, which is great because I was very concerned whenever it let me down the other day. And I know now that I just got to use my brain and be a little bit smarter whenever I'm out there. Thank you so much for watching. Here's a video pick just for you and a playlist of videos similar to this one. You stay safe out there in the water. I might just go out today with this because I can. <laughs>